this video I'm going to show you the recording of my process painting um, this artwork. It's uh, done in oil and uh, some of the background has a little bit of acrylic paint over here. It has golden color. This painting is titled The Midnight Dream. It's 38 inches square. I'm going to show you the process of painting um, as well as uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some elements and why I uh, combine these elements together to produce this artwork. All my paintings go through the ugly and the painting stage uh, that you can see here. I usually use one or two colors to underpaint the basic design and then I pre-mix my colors uh, to start painting in full color. Usually I have about three layers of uh, full color painting. I like painting uh, intangible feelings, sounds, air, and the unseen energy of everything living. Most of my recent paintings focus on that. I basically pa painted Midnight Dream, and uh, what it is, it, it's a portrait of a beautiful woman um, with intense gaze. And uh, I wanted to paint um, the mandala behind her and I wanted to put uh, the peacock feathers because they remind me of the eyes. I wanted to reference the eye of awareness or consciousness. And so these peacock feathers rem remind me of that. And so I put um, these feathers encircling the, the head. And I also have uh, a bunch of astral symbols to suggest the existence of the world beyond our perceived uh, reality. And I made the background uh, of, of golden acrylic paint. And then I touched it up with some black to create this feeling of uh, magical night. And when I switch to painting the portrait, I usually start painting the eyes first. And um, because of the steep uh, location of the camera, uh, the facial features look really crooked. It wasn't the case. It's always important to uh, keep checking uh, the anatomy um, as you keep painting. And this is what I do all the time. And uh, so to check the accuracy of drawing, I usually look in, in the mirror um, to see my uh, design reflected in the mirror. And it gives out all the mistakes that I have. And then I try to fix them as I keep painting. I also step back from my painting a lot um, to see it from the distance because when we paint up close it's just we focus on the details on small things and uh, sometimes we can lose um, the overall unity of the painting and um, as you step back, it helps to reevaluate um, the overall design and anatomy. I usually paint the eyes uh, with crisp edges and I have a lot of definition in the eyes uh, for, for a reason. Uh, if you look at classical painting, it's very soft and subtle. 
um, when you look at hair, it's soft, um, you know, all facial features, um, everything is super soft. Uh, while I'm trying to soften um, certain colors and edges, I usually keep my eyes quite uh, sharp uh, because I want to have them as my focal point. And whenever you have sharp edges, it just uh, your attention goes right into that area. And um, that's my um, that's my goal. When I had the idea for this painting, I wanted to paint a portrait. Uh, of a girl that uh, had, you know, crazy makeup, and um, this is one of the images that I found on Pixabay, and I really loved her facial expression and, you know, her intense gaze and the makeup. As an artist, I have classical training, um, well, as much as I could get it. And um, I keep my uh, plastic casts around the studio um, to look at them and to study them whenever I paint or draw. They give me a lot of inspiration just uh, looking at them daily. Now I begin filling in the nose and I start uh, painting the shadows first to define it but then I use uh, the second brush to paint the highlights and then I will just uh, create a range of values to paint from the darkest areas to the highlights. Whenever you paint the lips, study uh, the light, one of the lips is always uh, darker than the other. It's important because you start uh, mixing the paint, uh, thinking about lightness or darkness of the area.
and now I uh, fill in the skin tones on her cheeks and forehead. I'm very liberal at my color choices here. I actually go overboard. I want the portrait to have intense colors. Whenever I work on the ears, I try to do it in the same session as I paint the, fa the face. Otherwise, my colors and strokes seem to be a little bit different from the rest of the face. And um, I think it's quite important to get the overall picture uh, in one session. So I usually paint for six to eight hours uh, to begin with and when you know when I go to my second layer or third layer I can break it up and paint for two three hours if I have to but uh, the first initial session is important to get the overall uh, color and the feeling for the painting in you know, from the start.
I began painting the background first because the colors and edges inform me about uh, portrait painting and uh, I felt like it was necessary to fill in the design first. It's not difficult to paint the peacock feathers. Uh, it's a sheer amount of them, so whenever I got tired, I just, I, I just switched to drawing something else. I had no uh, intention to make them identical, but I, I did what want for them to have enough similarity so it reads as a unified picture.
I wanted to create different textural effects in this painting and uh, this is what you see me doing here. I use black paint with some brown mixed into it to apply uh, different kind of textures and then I use uh, pencil shapers I think it's called um, to lift out some paint to create a different kind of texture. Oh, now I remember it's um, it's called a color shaper, um, and I have a set uh, that consists of several color shapers. They uh, all of them have different points uh, to produce um, varied results. They're made of silicone and um, it's easier to clean, clean them up and um, it's fun to play with them um, to create these textures. Sometimes I use the back uh, side of my brush uh, to produce the texture as well or to create a super fine line. Um, but uh, these color shaper tools give me new possibilities. And obviously my previous layer was dry completely before I began applying bl black paint. So here you see me adding black paint over the golden one. And I use a lot of medium linseed oil um, to create transparent mixture and sometimes I wipe, wipe uh, some of it off to make it even more transparent. Um, but here I use a brush to soften and to spread it out a little bit more. And then I, uh, I use my color shaper tool um, to create this texture. Then I uh, work on the second layer, painting the mouth. I uh, pay attention to the rotation of the lips and uh, I always start painting from the darkest area. I uh, try to make them look around, thinking how they turn in space. And it's basically dark light, dark. And um, if you pay attention to that, uh, it would be easy for you to paint any lips. And at first I um, make notes, you know, I apply uh, strong colors of dark and light, but then I go back and soften them so it looks more natural and not linear.
Then I work on the skin tones again and I try to create uh, I try to put um, more um, color into the face, like refining it more. Um, it already has some color, but uh, in my subsequent layers, I keep refining it. And uh, it happens uh, by applying new paint, but also by shading in different directions um, to create volume. So I go around the face and uh, uh, work on my second layer, refining each uh, section.
like the ear becomes, you know, it has more volume now because I pay attention to um, to the transitions and I also pay attention to the anatomy because it rotates in space and uh, a lot of times it kind of grows out like when you paint it so I paid extreme attention to make it quite narrow to show uh, that the ear falls back in space and also uh, ears are always warm so I have um, quite a lot of uh, warm brown and uh, warm red mixed together uh, to give me this um, color.
Thanks so much for watching this video. I appreciate it very much. Please like, share uh, my video. Um, and also subscribe to my channel to see uh, new work in the future. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.